In this video, we'll talk about the respiratory burst. This is a high yield topic for USMLE step one. Respiratory burst or oxidative burst is a rapid release of reactive oxygen species, superoxide ions and many other things like hydrogen peroxide from phagocytes. So imagine this is a neutrophil which is engulfing a bacteria. After engulfing the bacteria inside the phagosome, there would be rapid release of reactive oxygen species. ROS or reactive oxygen species helps to eliminate the pathogen. In this video, we would try to understand this in a bit more details. So these are some pathogens which are potentially invaded our body. So obviously the first line of defense, the innate immune cells like macrophages, neutrophils and dendritic cells would try to engulf these pathogens. So after engulfing the pathogens, what happens is really important. So here we are looking at a portion of the neutrophil. So we are looking at the phagosome. It has engulfed the bacteria. Right now, oxygen would be taken in and would be rapidly converted to a particular reactive oxygen species. And this is done by the NADPH oxidase enzyme. In this process, NADPH is oxidized. Now this enzyme is super important in a disease context we would understand it in a bit more details. Further, superoxide dismutase convert it into hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide can be converted into H HOCl uh, reactive oxygen species by the help of myeloperoxidase enzyme. In parallel process, hydrogen peroxide can be converted into water, which is literally harmless for the cells or the bacteria. Now, hydrogen peroxide can be converted into water with the help of catalase. Sometimes many bacteria which has catalase can uh, convert or neutralize these ROS into water. In this process, glutathione is uh, required. So reduced glutathione gets oxidized, which gets further regenerated by the help of glutathione reductase enzyme. Ultimately, these reactive oxygen species can act on the bacteria and lead to its destruction. So the question is what reaction ox reactive oxygen species is doing to these bacteria? So ROS can lead to lipid peroxidation. Lipid peroxidation is basically attachment of the peroxide group on the lipid. And these uh, free radicals of the reactive oxygen species are highly reactive. So it lead to overall disorganization of the membrane as shown here. After that, it can also oxidize several bonds in the protein. That leads to structural and functional alterations of the protein. ROS can also create DNA damage. All of these damages together lead to the destruction of the bacteria. And this is how the pathogen is eliminated. Neutrophil's ability to create oxidative burst is compromised in a disease known as chronic uh, granulomatous disease or CGD. In chronic granulomatous disease, the enzyme NADPH oxidase, which is required to convert oxygen into the reactive oxygen species is compromised. So NADPH functionality is compromised in this disease. And as a result, ROS is not generated. When ROS is absent in that context, phagocytes cannot kill these pathogen efficiently. That's why they clump around these pathogen and create a situation known as granuloma. Patients are at high risk of infections with catalase positive species because catalase can convert hydrogen peroxide into water. So species like Staphylococcus, Aspergillus, they can create a lot of problems. Anyway, I hope this video was informative, short and useful. If you want more videos and more notes, flashcards, visit our Facebook page and Instagram page. Link is provided in the description. And please support our channel with super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. See you in next video.